Ah, uh, good afternoon, everybody. How are you? Uh, we're just laughing. Jackie, where is our coffee? Come on, you can't be cheeky like that and not supply the coffee. Um, good afternoon, Sue. Hi, all. Anna's here. Kristen's here. Yeah, you've got your coffee. We'll, we'll get coffee. I'll get coffee, Em. Good afternoon, Diane. To you as well, you lovely thing. Catherine, good afternoon. Hello, Chris. Carol, Marg Evans is here. Oh, I hate this bit because then I start going, whose orders have I done? Whose haven't I done? I need to see Anne Reid pop up. Um, Carol, Yvonne, good afternoon. Lovely to see you. And uh, Francis is here. Did, did we all, we all had a lovely time on Saturday afternoon, didn't we? So much so. I did. I really enjoyed it. I'm going to do it again this week. And, and uh, I'm going to be here on Thursday evening. Well, I'm always here. But in this room with, <laughs> with Facebook Live on. <laughs> you can so check out any time you like, but you can you never You can leave. never leave. Romper Room, you ready? Good afternoon, Carol, Sylvia, Sharon. Oh, Sharon Keys, don't put her in the dark in the moment. She said she's a little bit radioactive. Isn't that a song? There is a radioactive song. There isn't a radioactive song. We're not picking on you, but it, sorry, Sharon. Welcome home. Glad you got home okay. Judy, good afternoon. Oh, Bernadette, you wicked girl. Oh, why am I calling Bernadette wicked? Must be an mm -hmm. order she had in. I don't know. Good afternoon, Jill. The sun is shining for once in the Blue Mountains. Did we need to talk to Jill about anything? Not this week. I know why. We. She was probably in our heads... When um, we were thinking when about... we were having a blue moment? No, the big book of feet moment. Oh, yes. I don't know. We haven't done that. Oh, okay. So Diane always comments on... Hi, everyone. Diane always comments on my set. She's got a thing. She's a virtual merchandising girl. Oh. It's calming. It wasn't very calming when I was wearing a swirly red and blue top 10 minutes ago. Hence, I've gone with the crushed look today. That's so and even my hair's not been ironed. <laughs> at the same time. Good afternoon, Lorraine. Now, um, Mel, what do you mean it's wet? Where? It, it, the clouds are building here, so I'm assuming we're going to get it as well. We're going to. Did you like that? We're oh, going to. We are going to. I anticipate. Precipitation. Precipitation. Thank you. Helen Marie Noel, hello. Good afternoon, Judy Sleeman. I've started singing and I can't sing because Nat does it and I can't do it. Oh, Nan, I'm glad you enjoyed it. It is Saturday afternoon. Well, Saturday, I've thought about doing what I wanted to do on Thursday night. No, Thursday night's going to be a little bit a, a little bit more bags and applique uh, uh, evening. But uh, Saturday afternoon's going to be free motion. And that will encompass free motion applique and free motion quilting at a very poignant moment at the end of March where we're going to bite the bullet and do our second intake for Be Mindful, which has just kind of been kind of loitering in, in the background. So uh, There we go. Michelle Fisher, good afternoon. Lynn Ferber is here and Tina's here. Hey, Tina, how are things in Newcastle? All good? You can run, but you can't hide, can you? Mm -hmm. Jenny Miller is in the building. Hello. Judith Calliday is here from Yarra. A little rain down there. I don't know. Oh, Flix here from the gorgeous east coast of northern Tasmania. Uh, I don't think he'll put his mullet on Facebook. We can try for you, Flick. No, won't do it. And do you do you really do you really want to impart that influence on your three year old grandson? Three year old grandson wants a mullet. Surely Don's not happy with that, and I jest. Surely not. Sue Singh is here from LA. <gasps> Hi, Sue. Oh, I was craving something. Oh, uh, the crab cakes down at the restaurant on the corner on Manhattan Beach. Head down towards the water, and it's a it's a restaurant on the right hand side. Biffy and I. I every now and then I get a thing for LA crab cakes. I think the best place in the world to get crab cakes. Okay. Or except that restaurant in, in Houston. Do you need a Yeah, I do. Thanks. Steve, I need yes. to take a picture of your mullet later because Flick's grandson wants one. 
Yeah. 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 Here we go. Yeah. I can keep pulling and you'll be on full set. <laughs> no, I've got to pay for that. We're um, going to cut it off as a fundraiser, everyone. We're just deciding what that fundraiser is. Yeah, sure. And uh, we'll let you know. It's warm and sunny yeah, in Newcastle. It sounds like we Hi, are James. Off, not Steve. How are you today? Uh, James. Oh, he did tell me. James. Yeah, you're on. So, James. So, Flex on the East Coast. So, I'm going to do it the other way around for you. I don't know. Flicks on the east coast and James is on the west coast of Tassie. I'm just thinking, I'm just watching, <laughs> yeah, you, watching you on my screen. <laughs> Doing no, it. the other way around. Oh, Errol's here from the hills. She's a hills person in the nicest possible way because my parents are too. Errol's in Callista where mum and dad got married. There you go. We are heading up to Badger Creek Weir tomorrow. Errol, doing a little bit Walk. of a... Yeah, walk and research and business and mum and dad in the car at the same time, all that. <laughs> Love the curse. Yes, let's not go there, Sharon. Don't encourage him. Jane, not funny. Stephen, they're all on your side. That's because they're not your mother. <laughs> uh, dear me. Oh, Lorraine's off to Tassie for three weeks. Oh, wow. They live where? Oh, 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 Lorraine, I wouldn't be able to sleep. That's so exciting. All right, Jane's here as well. Good afternoon, everyone. Only had a bit of drizzle here. Okay, so we've done the whole we've done the whole weather thing. That's all the weather. We've done the whole weather. Now, um, on the notice board, yes, yeah, so we really did kind of challenge the Epilepsy Foundation. So here's what's... Really? <laughs> With the lemurs? Seriously? Yeah, we did. Okay. We we wiped out what we had. We wiped out our Parkdale op shop, and then we fed them in from Bowie. And now, so if you have not seen your order leave the building yet, it is going to leave today. It'll be hi, Jin. It'll be welcome to our pet free environment at Chandler's Cottage. Um, we will check that in for you. Check it out. Get it out of here and keep that down. So when the lemur does arrive with your name on it. We will chuff it out with your next order. And if you don't place an order within a couple of weeks, well, we'll just front the postage for it because it's not fair. You don't have your purple lemurs because now you never knew you wanted a purple lemur, but now you know they exist. Of course you want one. If they... that won't work. I'll just um, have to keep a hard copy of their order. Please. Well, that up until some people... If somebody doesn't order until, let's say, next Friday, then it'll leave them. Yeah. It's not really fair on them. Hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. Sorry. What oh, yeah, but they've got to go because everyone wants all their other stuff. Sorry, staff meeting. <laughs> everyone is waiting yeah. on all their other stuff. Yeah. So, so as we get the lemurs, we'll just send all of them out. Oh, okay. We'll just send them all out? Yeah. All right. Okay. We can do that. We can do that with our e-parcel. Sorry, it's 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 an administration thing. We're really exciting. What was that, Emma? Can I plug this in? Yes, you can. Plug that. Jim, it's a it's everyone's, everyone's gate crashing your set today. <laughs> just remember back to Saturday afternoon. It was just you and me and Rob popped in every now and then. Now today it's just a circus in here. Oh, Sue Morris has got a new modem so she can see us again. Haven't you got some face, some some Facebook cat, Facebook you follow, Ginny, that you should be some on watching funny cat videos? <laughs> okay, let's get let's get down to today. Today, Em and I have had we're in a little bit of a panic mode because Em's not here much in in spirit, only in April, and we had we had a few we had a few things that we been talking about since Christmas that we wanted to come back and do to finish off to show you and we're sort of in that get it all done mode I don't know why because we could do it in May but there are some things that have been sitting here waiting Michelle there's a plane about to come over your place we've been waiting 
to get done. So two of those are here today. And the reason that they've sort of been sitting on hold to come back to you is because they, they hold some valuable content in terms of techniques and, and showing you different things as well. So that's what we're going to do. But first up, Emma didn't know last week that we were getting iris fabric. So I brought it back for an encore performance and I want to show it to you with a couple of things. This bag here we talked about so this is the thing we talked about this and we had it as a kit for a limited time last year we've popped it back up as a kit today and any minute now it will be up as a digital pattern and a hard copy for you to buy as well so this is our gum leaf tote now i know a lot of you are saying yeah we've seen it before and you have but okay, so oh it's got wax back. in it it's got ball clips in it so it didn't fall off the shelf so I want to get you close and personal with the applique. And, and this also was kind of important because I had it up at the Moore World Craft Alive show. A lot of people, a lot, lot, a lot of people came past and went, oh, I love the applique. I couldn't do that. And it, the applique put them off the bag. And I thought that was a bit unfair. So we're going to have a look at that today. Just the whole assembly and everything to get it ready. And then when we do our free motion on Saturday afternoon, I'm going to come through and demo how I did the thread work on the bottom of the gum nuts. And that will also, is that okay with you? Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm um, just having a moment. You're having a moment of what colour I'm going to do the... No, 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 of, of what gum nuts go where as uh, I try okay. and put them on over here. Um, so we're going to do that Saturday afternoon while we talk about raw edge applique with Be Mindful and while I quilt the uh, panels for the second version of this bag that Emma's prepping up and I'm pointing there because she's over there prepping it up <laughs> ready to bring ready to bring on set to show you what is that not oh it's not post under office, it man. Steve taking his youth with your post to the post office uh -huh. so we're going to go through applique and the basic construction of this bag today it's a really good one to do now because it is the same assembly technique as this little one that we did with our promo for the floral cork a couple of weeks ago. This, these two bags are assembled exactly the same way. So that's why we're coming back and doing that. So I'll pop this back up here for a minute because M will be through with that very soon. If you have, what, where, when, well, what, what, what? Who's allergic to cats? Oh. Who's allergic to cats? Oh, Debbie, are you? Oh, that's a shame. Uh, you're all doing stuff. I don't know what you're doing. I'll, I'll come back and read what you're writing in a minute because I'm on a roll. Okay, so irises are back up there. Now, the reason I popped the irises back up, remember that little promo we had with the iris pattern? Emma's walked in this morning, looked at that, looked at that download, uh, sorry, the pattern that I gave you with the jelly rolls, that we, the fabric rolls we sold out of, and then we looked at this and we went, oh, so there is... There are plans afoot to modify, reduce the free iris pattern that we gave away to go here so that we can then put this here and have irises in here. Uh -huh. So we're working on that for you. Um, and then these are all now up on the website. So when you actually go in and click on the banner at the top of the page today, you are going to find multitudes of Northcote Shimmer. And I want you to have a look very seriously at the price because they are only available this week in half meter increments but have a look at the price reduction that I've given you for today and that will stay up until uh, Wednesday next show, Thursday evening. So I'm going to leave that up until um, the show will be at 7.30 till 7 o'clock on Thursday night. I have learnt when I make things up on the fly, can I have a bit of paper? Not that one. <laughs> uh, not that one, she says. Um, I'm going to leave that up till then. Fabric's coming through now. If you if you see anything in terms of beautiful metallics that are made in Japan and they are still 26 or under, they were made prior to the issues with Russia, Ukraine, and to an extent a little COVID. bit with COVID as well. Because... I feel like a child that threw something off the high chair then. It was like, thanks. Um, every, everything coming through now 
is coming through and it's sitting at about 27.50, 28 and it is a combination of different things. Most of it though is the freight. Freight, and I, I think I shared with you the other day, we yes. had to pay, if I didn't I shared it with everyone else in the world, that our freight into Spain now, air freight, is double what it was. And I'm talking double. I'm talking between $750 to $1,500 for two small boxes of fabric. So you take that and multiply it out to our distributors and, and us bringing stuff in from overseas. It's a nightmare. Anyway, so these are beautiful, beautiful shimmers. Not like the Northcote shimmers that we have with all the little speckly gold on. These are, they all have their own beautiful little pattern. Now these, this isn't a new product. Northcote have been running these for two, three years now. Uh, and we first saw these at, at, at the market in Melbourne, didn't we? When we went to, when the boys were opposite, our distributor was opposite mm -hmm. us, I feel. So you go from really subtle, fine, fine little dots. We have had some of them off and on in time. You go a bigger dot. Oh, what, what am I dropping everywhere? No, I think that was just noises. Oh, no, a bag fell down behind you. <laughs> okay. Don't and fall over it. Don't fall over the bag. And then you go down, see so it goes darker. So we will, of course, be doing pre-cut packs and everything. But once we start doing pre-cut packs, they do take a bit of time and effort and everything. So we just decided to kick off having these as a standard range on our website, that we would put them on special today. What I mean. Are they not just stunning? So they go right down and then there is, this is the one that we've had before Em. That we loved. Ooh. Yes, I do. So that. if you do, if you love doing collage quilts, color play, color wash, um, getting that texture in there, these are fantastic. You might see a couple of straight off that you've seen before that you love, or you might want to grab a couple of them to have. So at half, pro um, sorry, not half price, half meter pieces at super specials price, they are worth grabbing. And then after that. Um, Em and I will probably come through next week and we will start having a play with doing them as pre-cuts. They're all such lovely friends. Yeah, aren't they nice friends? So they also have friends. So that is why my little Melba uh, evening bag is at the flower totes up here because we are friends. We are all friends here. So this is your real blue teal colorway, that kind of real seagrass color. And then this is a, I just call this a riot. This is that gorgeous fuchsia pink through the purple and then down into blues. Now, I, wanna, I just want to pull one out to show you. You know, this is lift up. Yep. all about, yep. no, we're good. But this is all about us really deciding, as I said to you before this year, to be your non-stop applique shop. One of a better word. Look at that. Aren't they scrummy? And then we do this. You know what I'm going to do, don't you? We do this. Bit of cross pollination. Bit of cross pollination. We do this. I haven't got them in the right order in terms of light to dark. But if I just do that, okay. So we go across and then to light, and Emma knows what I did before. I was smug, 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 smug. I did that. <laughs> and this pulls them all up. Oh, I haven't tagged this one. This is Gelato 203. I'll go through and tag it in a minute. Could I have the pen and paper? Two, oh. Ginny! Okay, that's it. You have not done this for weeks. Off. The girls, and you realise the, the work in sticky rollering that's required, even with due dis I hope today no one has ever found a cat hair because we go to great lengths, great lengths to make sure that you don't get any. She's not allowed in the cutting room. There you go. See how that goes? Whoosh. And then the other thing that goes, I've been playing, is fuchsia. Our beautiful fuchsia pink, or lilac as it's called flowering gum. This is the last bolt. We have officially five meters left on at the moment. So that all goes. So if you've got this in your stash, 
confidently that these Northcote shimmers that I've tagged will, will all go with them. Um, oh yeah. Just just as a side side thing, if you've got your little bit of Figo at home as well, <laughs> there's just I've never found a, a, a graceful way in to manage bolts. They're not exactly graceful on the set. Well, yeah, we're always mm. fun with them on a show when they come coming over over the top. Oh yeah. See what I mean, see what I mean, see what I mean. Look at that. So if you wanted a dark blue or if you've got the dark blue Figo in the stripe, it's going to go with this, as does the purple. So just because a lot of you, you know, the phone calls, the phone calls every week about Lisa, can you check this goes with this, goes with this, goes with this, goes with we do That's all of that. End. Oh, I've got a little bit of a faux pas. Anne Reid's not getting my emails. Oh. She asked me to do a big match-up between corks and ombres and batiks and everything, and I did it. There's something in the abyss. I've got to... Oh, there was I've weirdness to this morning it. too, remember? There was weirdness this morning. Hmm. Optus have been doing weird, weird things here in our neighbourhood. May I please have a pin? No. We may have a pin. Bag made before we No, I'm not. I'm not. This is the other colorway. I've put there's lots more on the website. There's this beautiful, torpy, oh, gray colored collection, and then there's that salmon pink thing that's mm. out there. We're going to use that. This is the beautiful, jady, teal green colorway up here, and notably with this, it does go across and work really well with. Um, our gum leaves so if you wanted something to go with those in the mint that's going to work really well and the other thing I found that goes with that lot at the top are these which are how many times have we ordered this bolt oh, these are really? Hoffman so I've tagged these this is that gorgeous little gorgeous little fine stripe is that like eucalypt it's not eucalypt though is it this is juniper a juniper juniper Let's um, put that in our gin. Yes, or in my pot here, thank you very much. Juniper and eucalyptus. So these both go. So if you want to extend out this collection, they all work really well. And I don't know why... What is that here? Which? Oh, I know, <laughs> I know why. This is here because uh, I was looking to see if it had any friends with all of these. And it kind of does. It works quite nicely. But it doesn't have any other friends out there anymore, Em. It's a bit lonely. Oh, it's lonely. So I, put it, I, so, I, so I marked it right down to super cheap. So it's on clearance. There you go. So that's all of those. The other thing I finally did this week was get a newsletter out. And to do a newsletter, uh, it required some work because um, you when I chat to you, I go, okay, this is it. And this is how it's made. And if you go to the website, you'll see the kit there and you just see the fabric there. You don't actually say, see the finished project. Oh, we're doing a bit of that today, actually, aren't we? Um, just a little. Just a little. In the new colour. So we did a newsletter. I had to actually go and take the photos. Oh. So newsletter is out with these in. And they just they looked right on set because also, see what I mean? They all, oh, can you see that? They kind of, it all works. Friends. Friends. Friends, friends, friends. This does not have a friend on set, but it does have a friend on the table. So, I'll show you what's down here. Oh, also Free Motion Saturday. Heavens, have you all got a darning foot? If, if you need a darning foot, you need to ring me. Not right now. Not right now. <laughs> Email me, no, email it. me info at Chandler's Cottage pronto because our banana stocks are leaving the building Friday. Ooh. Ooh. Friday. <coughs> uh, it's all leaving. It's going to Deb at the Sewing Bee in Baxter. So that is, that's, that's the lovely banana community. When you put your banana dealership on hold or you leave it for a while or you go on holiday, you hand it over to another banana dealer. So my leftover feet stock is going to Deb. So if you want to grab something when they orders from me, 
please let me know if you need to down input because we do have some there um, that are going to go off, going to go off to Deb. Free motion Saturday. I had to make a second one of my 3D flower fun uh, table runner, so this will also be part of the demo on Saturday. I'm going to glue it. Would you like me to put that for you? Sure. Thanks. All right. So. The two projects, as I said, that we were going to cover with some techniques today. Let me just check on you. Are you all all right? Oh, goodness, where did you all come from? Am I going to sneeze? Bless you. No. <laughs> no, excuse me. Bless you. I, it's the first time for everything. I got through hay fever season. Put your tongue on your roof your mouth. <laughs> Do it. Oh, Ruthie Ben's here having a relaxing day at home. No, it's not. It's not. We're at home, but it, <laughs> it's not relaxing. Poor Steve. He's not here. We can talk about him now. On the phone for how long? <gasps> Poor with TNT FedEx trying to get some better mates rates uh, for, I told you about this, for um, the textile pantry. But it's very exciting because we're starting, we're starting to send out their brick in bulk. So if you live in so. Queensland near Pleasure Shop, Pleasure So, okay, they'll be getting their new stock of Under the Australian Sun next week. So I can say that now. We're back on. Um, Judith, uh, we've also got yummy things coming down to you at Yarram. See? How good's that? I love it. Spreading the love. Yes, I got rid of you. My sewing. Um, Carol says her sewing room has been cleaned and the fabric cupboard is now back in order, minus some fabrics that have found a new home. So more room for new fabrics lot. That's so funny. Uh, Sometimes they just need to be thunderstorm on. Don't work with children and animals. Correct. That is absolutely correct, Joan. You and I are stuffed then. Uh, Judith, Jenny would go on tour if she wanted to. In fact, she has her own hashtag now that we need to start using, which is hashtag Miss Jenny. Uh, we need to start using it more often. Hello, Jill and Carol. Cindy's here from Yeovil. Oh, yeah, I've been here. Yeah, you've got to go through the stash. Now, if you're in a quilter's life, you know what month it is. And you do know. Uh, Jane loves irises. Okay, we're all good. We're all good. Ah, see, Cindy, you get out and about on the internet. I don't. She's a lot of fabrics have gone up to thirty-two fifty. Oh, and they should be. Oh, we've got no. Seriously, we've got. Mm. You know, there's some out mm -hmm, there that mm -hmm, should be mm -hmm. that. And I've just gone. No, we will just um, absorb it from absorb it. it, and and we try and go with uh, selling more at a lower at a, at a lower marker rather than putting the price up high. And Emma knows that's my lobotomy from working for McDonald's years ago. And working in food service, uh, food service, food manufacture. That's what we do. Um, oh, Sue, so LA, message from LA. It's amazing that the metallics are not popular in Los Angeles area. They are not. You're absolutely mm -hmm. right. Fairy Bros that you showed a while back is on the clearance racks. They don't do it, Sue. Best place, best place for metallics in America for me, for my fabrics was uh, Martha's Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard? And the Hamptons, something like that it was. But yes, there are particular areas that were states that were better than others, and uh, California was not one of them. Does it? Is it? Oregon. Oregon was good. Sorry. Is it like traditional style quilting? Is it the style of the local? I don't know. I, 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 California is so vast. I, I'm probably even generalising it, which is really wrong. It's like generalising the east coast of Australia. Mm. So I shouldn't do that. But she's right. LA was not. The shops there would, would not not. Um, the new order of what flick there black flower and gum is in is is in the next shipment, not in this one. I got a box out there. No. I but you know what's in the box? I there's a song but I'm not going there. Okay, don't go there. Alright. 
This is what we wanted to come back and talk to you about today. So this is our castle ceiling bed runner. So on the website you have got the castle ceiling pattern for the quilt. Remember we did this? And also the table runner. Um, we don't know what happened but it didn't go where it was supposed to go and it certainly didn't get set up properly for everyone. So ta -da, it now is. And that looks really good with the top stitched binding on it. It's so precise, isn't it? Okay, this is... Have a look at the back. I'm impressed by the back of the top stitch binding. So hang on a minute. You sewed it on the back first. Yes. And then you top stitched it on... To the front. To the front. But look, how the, look at the finish of where I've actually finished the top stitching. Isn't that schmick? It is schmick. That is the term we wish to run with for now. That is very schmick. All right, one of the secrets to this looking so crisp and flat is double-sided fusible. Yes. So double-sided fusible foam batting. So we use the sewing mostly for our bags. If you don't want to quilt your bags, you pop in most likely the single-sided. But we also have double-sided, which was bought for the purpose of a very, very good flat table runner or a placemat or... This is just too, it's well too organised today. <laughs> just too organised. Now, before we, before we get the machine up so Em can take you through binding, I just wanted to give you another little heads up on this pattern. So, this has all been fussy cut from Melba. I have popped it on a little bit of a spesh today for you, and it will be ROT stock okay good afternoon Fiona um, it will be uh, oh Kathy Lynch is here too it will be um, ROT stock so when you get your stock to make your table runner you'll go where's the fold where's the fold it will have come off uh, a roll and it may be torn but it will be generously torn and that is why we can do it at a slightly better price for you because we've brought it in without having it bolted that's um, the Chandler's Cottage little privilege it is a nightmare to manage <laughs> the big R -O -T rolls. I found a way to do it. Yeah. I've ordered a sheep feed trough. Okay. I have. I've ordered a feed trough. As you do. So when we move to our little farm, you'll have another use. <clears throat> but it's on a stand and we can lay the roll in and we can... They're heavy. They're big and heavy. With this pattern, you're going to get two different sizes of a wedge and your little, what's that? It's a long hexagon. It's a lozenge. It's a lozenge. And you're going to come through and you're going to fussy cut. Now, we haven't kitted it up and the reason is that it's pretty straightforward. I want you to buy a metre of this and I want you to buy half a metre of your um, coordinate. coordinate. And and to get around all of that, the half metre of the coordinate is going to give you these cross blocks, as I like to call them, and also your binding, because your binding is, and we'll show you, will have to be cut on the bias. So the reason you need a fair chunk of this fabric is because you're going to be fussy cutting from it. If you want to do it with something else, the best thing that I would suggest you do is buy and download a digital copy of the pattern then you can print it out straight away and that will be up in the next half hour or so as soon as Steve gets back. Um, download that, have a look, because uh, you don't have to pay for postage or anything and it's right with you. Then have a little bit of a play with it with all the fabrics you've got. You may have half a metre of this in your stash and therefore you only need to buy a little bit more. So cut what you can from what you've got first or grab a metre. When you come to cut this, and I think you can... Can you see my template on there? Probably not. Would you like me to zip around it with a sharpie so you can see the black uh, edge? No, I, th I think we're okay now. I just want to show the girls that... See how I've got my template sitting just above the Waratah? What will happen is you can get a quarter inch seam into the middle of the little crisscross on the Corea and then you'll be able to flip it over and do the same on the other side. That way you'll get two out of this little area here. If you're super frugal, super, super frugal, you can actually get four, but it's at a stretch. 
So that's what I want you to do. If you go too close into the center, you'll only be able to get one out of this whole lot. So you're going to pull it back a little bit. The other thing too um, is that with this template, I want you to cut it out first without the seam allowance because this is the true measure and shape that you want. Um, and I find it's quite cool because you can line that up there. So you're just sitting above the Waratah and your point comes down and sits down here, right near the middle of the flannel flower. So have a little bit of a think about it, but you also may have a feature print the, the, on the medium size like Melba at home and you might want to use that so you can have a little bit of a play. And I've only done three. You can make long table. Yeah, mega dining table. Mega dining table. But you need 24 wedges. So you need 24. 24 of the kite shape, isn't it? Yeah, of those kite shape wedges to do it. So that's what we're playing with. Now the, the other shape... Um, depending on depending on what we've done in terms of coordinate fabrics so with the cream one we're suggesting the olive flowering gum you could run green melba fan if you wanted to but these are the ones that we've tagged for today so you know what we think goes together really well um, I suppose once once these are all done we'll put pictures off of them too so with the with the ivory pink I'm actually going to use um, Melba fans in pink. Now I actually have to, want to, need to make all of these up because I've got fabric sitting with Mary Beth in Pittsburgh waiting for her samples um, to put with the fabric and have a little bit of a rah-rah at her place. I've got to finish these and get them off to Natasha and get them off to Maria So in Spain. So they're sort of, we'll have a look at them here first and then we'll chuff them off to the girls. So you can see what I'm doing here. I can, I can get a little bit of a a bit of a look and get it really nice and symmetrical if I want to and then I will take the same area so that way when I get to this cross block on here they will radiate the fans will radiate out as well from the center and that will make quite a nice different effect as well so I'm putting the pink so a meter of this with half a meter of the pink or I'm putting the gray measure of the gray I've actually cut a meter there and we were right Okay. A metre of that with half a metre of the teal. I think the teal's really good. You can run the grey. There's no reason you couldn't, but I like that contrast. And then with the black, I'm, I'm not running the solid, um, the solid flowering gum, and I'm not running the orange fans. The orange fans have a real punch to them, mm -hmm. and I've just decided I don't want to run that one. It's just for me but I want to run the multi in the flowering gum and it's just got that little pop of green in it that I think will set that off quite nicely. So they're the combos that, that I'm putting together. So and if you remember when we did this at the start as well, if I just pop these down. Oh, and that would be really good if you could see them. See, I've got marks on there. See that? That was me fussy cutting out my shapes and what I have done is there you go I'm just sitting that on there so I had little marks with a sharpie pen for the bottom of a V on one of the vines and the top little bit of my Waratah and so every time that I laid this template over my print I got it exactly the same because you you really can't run this like a you can't stack, you can't stack you can't them, stack them no. not even the um i mean you'd be pinning a gazillion times if you use this yeah way. not even center stage so, uh, with the floral you wouldn't the 24 yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys. just trace them well, individually it's, it's something look part. on a little tray in front of the television i emptied my tray last night outlander new series killing me kibili yeah <laughs> killing me so, Emma, you're up for it? I believe I might be. You're up for it. But you haven't told the girls about where you're cutting your, your cross blocks from and what you're doing with the rest. How are you doing the rest? Or am I telling them you're that? You're telling them that bit. Oh, you haven't given me the spare bit to cut it from then. Ah, uh, that's in your contract. Which bit? This? <laughs> it must be. You mean this? The spare bit. Where I'm cutting the binding from the other end. Because you're going to cut your 
cross blocks from one end and then from the rest I'm Oh, my yes. Own. Okay, no, I'll tell the girls that. Actually, that is not half a metre, but I will give you... I will... It would probably... It would almost be enough. Okay. What what Em is trying to tell me in, in 20 words or less while we're live on Facebook is when you come to cut your binding... No, this is kind of you. When well, you, come you will to cut, cut your... Your, uh, oh, I want you to cut your lozenges your all from one end. Do not encroach up here. Don't go across the bolt. Don't go across the bolt. I want them all down. Not that one. I want them all down this end. What do you reckon? Just and pick you only need eight. You only need eight. So you keep them nice and small. You'll have a quarter inch seam allowance. So you, you're going to cut four, four, and four, four. It comes up to, I can tell you right now, Jenny... She's four playing. times four, 16, so it's going to come up to 16. So it's going to come up to about there, just before the fold. Okay. All right, and you'll have you'll have stacks. Because this bit's too small, you'll have half a metre. So the girls oh, will Oh, yes, be fine. it's not a half metre. So will I leave this bit here for you? May I chop it up? You may chop, because that way you're just making my binding for me. Ahead right. of but time. But I didn't bring the right colour for that binding. <laughs> Love what? What oh, colour? You don't need to make it up. I was just going to oh, say. Oh, just cut it. Okay. Just, just cut it because we all get so confused with, um, we do, depending on the time of day, with cutting bias. What do you need? Do you want a ruler? Do you want a rotary cutter? Uh, I think there's a rotary cutter over there. If there's not, I know where to grab a really nice I would sharp one. Grab a nice sharp one. Okay. Got scissors. So Emma's going to talk to you about binding on the bias. And then she sort of started this one for me which is really great. And I was going this morning, I'm going to have to quilt it, I'm going to have to quilt it. And then we went, no, we don't. We've got double-sided batting. Fine. So um, it's just a little bit, uh, it, it, I don't know. It's autumn, isn't it? I just, you know, I just go a little bit silly. It's all about autumn colours and getting the house nice because in winter because we all go out and we let's face it we've all been out a little bit more than last summer and now you sort of go oh we're going to be home again more and there's soups and there's casseroles and there's sewing and home and so I love a good table runner and I get terribly bored walking past the dining table with the same thing on all the time do you do that is there anything on yours at the moment yeah what? Oh, which which dining table the one in the lounge room. The, no, there's two. There are two in the lounge room. Well, there are two. Hello, everybody. Yes, would Someone anybody said, like a round dining table? You have to say hello to Carol Drury. Carol Drury? Hello, yes. Carol Drury. This is her first time watching. Oh, Aww. hello, Carol. Welcome to the madhouse. Yes. Hey, Floria. Floria sent me a nice email this morning. Oh, did she? How is she? Wait, I Helen Clark and Gail are together. Hey, Clarkie. We go way back. May I oh, Violet's over. watching. Okay. I know I love Violet. This is my grandma. Can, can you, I get you out? You invited me in, so... And there's no escape route. I have to go this I way. I told you you can check out every time you like. <laughs> hey, Pauline, wakey. You've got... Have you got everything you need? I think so. But I think I need to look at Everyone. this camera, which is... What, what do you want? It's full, oh, I'm so but it's on pretty. Ta-da! Ta look at that. Don't use it too long. It goes flat. Okay, well let's work fast. So, bias is our friend. We have to talk about the soiree as well later. Okay. Sh Sharon Keys is coming. She's already bought a ticket. She's bought a ticket. Okay. Woo -woo. We're using true bias, girls. Now, on your ruler, there are angled lines. And yes, you can just see them. I hope I can see them on the preview. And they're on both ends of the ruler, but you want the 45. And I'm working off the selvage, which I know is straight. And I'm putting my, which I'm going to work from the bottom line. I'm putting my 45, I'm going to come down here to a decent size cut. I'm putting my 45, that's my 45 line, directly in line with the edge of the selvage. And I am cutting. That one's too little to use. And then I'm going to spin around my fabric, remembering that we've, we've used most of that piece for our lozenge yes! shapes. Karen DeWilt's coming too! Who? With her sister-in-law. Okay. Karen DeWilt's coming to the retreat. Karen's a hoot. 
through. Uh, oh, okay, Catherine, uh, give my love to Nen from all of us, please. Catherine's off to see her. She's off to see her Nen in the nursing home. Oh, well, we're lucky that we can see our Nens in the nursing mm -hmm. home again. So now I'm cutting two and a quarter inch bias strip. So I'm cutting parallel to my first cut and two and a quarter inch and two and a quarter inch. And then I've got tips and tricks for you because as much as as quilters we are a little bit oh, cautious about bias. We're not always sure it's our friend. Yes, do be careful and gentle with it, but be gentle with it because it's your friend. Sometimes the bias fairies come when the weather's very humid and bias cut pieces might not quite be the same shape or size that they were when you first cut them. But if you just continue to work through until you get to the section where you've already cut your lozenges, you'll have these lovely bias cut strips. The reason we like the bias cut strips is, for anyone who doesn't know, and we're not all experts, I'm going to cut a piece from here. And because Lisa's let me play with this piece, I'm going to cut an equivalent length piece from here on the straight so that you can see the difference in how it behaves. I need to talk. Okay. Are uh, you after coffee, by the way? That would be nice. Sure. You're uh, on the... Yep. You're on. Um, I just wanted to say too, I'll talk about the soiree. Trybooking.com and you put in Needleworker Soiree. Oh, it's in the newsletter anyway. Needleworker yeah. Soiree. And it will come across onto my Facebook page as well. Now, a couple of ladies, including uh, Kathy Hearn and a few others, Bernadette have said, I think it's Bernadette, could you please, so you can book a table, or you can book onto a table. So if you've got four or five of you mad ladies and you all want to come together, you just go in and you book a table. If there's oh, five so there's of you, options for... there is, if there's five of you and it's a table of six, we'll try and leave it at the five, but it, it might be that we'll contact one of you and say, we'll contact you and say, hey, we've got a lovely lady who's also in a quilter's life or the applique sampler or there's a Chandler's Cottage Live watcher, can we pop her on your table? But mm -hmm. if not, so Kathy's actually been, can you put me on a table with the applique sampler girls? I will absolutely do my best for everyone together that I can. Look, it's not a competition. Don't go there. Uh, Off you go. You go out there. It's not a competition. Shh. But I'm going to make sure the Chandler's Cottage Girls gets in before the Margaret Upston and the Karen Styles Girls get in. Wait, where does Lisa King sit? Ooh. On the fence between both of us. No, she's a Karen Styles Girl because she sews at Karen. She works. She's a Chandler's Cottage Girl. But Okay, now I want to show you again here. So here are my two pieces that are essentially the same size, but I have one cut on the straight grain and one cut on the bias. Now this one will bend nicely. This one will not. This one has limits on its stretch. This one goes a long way. So when we're qu by, not quilting, binding, something like this little beastie beast we've got all of these actually it's probably easier if I point at this point here all of these inverted angles this one particularly sharp although you can't really see that on this one here on the green you couldn't have said this is a bit trickier to see so you want it to be able to kind of snuggle up the excess and flex round these, the, uh, what degree are they, 45 and 90, 135 degree corners. So, but these ones on the outside here, they're our usual 90 degree, to turn the corners as you would when you are binding the corner of a quilt, the outside corner of a quilt. 
So if I go back to me, sorry, Lisa's got all the tricks of the trade when it comes to driving the camera. I certainly haven't had the same amount of practice. Now, in order to show you how we bound it, we did do it quickly on the machine. You could bind in the traditional way where you attach your binding to the front and turn it over to the back. Same technique, still use bias cut binding as opposed to straight cut binding. So, I, in this instance, stitched it onto the back, starting here, and I've then folded it to the front. So I've finished very close to I finished top stitching down on the front, very close to where I finished previously. Top stitching down. No, not top stitching. Sewing the binding on. And, sorry Ginny, cat's under the table now, she's not on it. I believe I'm coming over here to camera three. And here comes the sewing machine. Knew that was going to happen. Oh, and we were doing the bag last on this machine, so I'll have to do a, a full retread. Sorry, girls. Now, a couple of tips and tricks for sewing bias cut binding. So we made all of our lovely little strips and they are only short cuts, even when they're cut from 50 centimetre length. They are only short cuts across that 50 centimetre length. So you have to join them all end to end with angled seams and you would be sewing these two together. So we would pop them like this, just offsetting so you can see a quarter inch triangle. I'll work out where you can see it where the light's not so bright. There's a tiny little quarter inch triangle just remaining here, that's a quarter inch there. And I'm going to sew it in black so you can see it, just for argument's sake for today. Oh, are you threaded? Or are you not threaded? Are you glasses? Uh, needle is not threaded, it's come unthreaded in the process of me moving the machine. Hmm. Maybe I could have hit my light. While you're doing that, can I show the girls? Can I show the girls? Oh, please show the girls, because then I'll re-thread as well. So there's a box here today. Oh, um, I didn't know that's what you were showing the girls. <laughs> there's a box here today that has very exciting things in it. And the saddest thing about showing you these things is that we can't have them yet and we can't oh, sell them yet and we can't really play with them yet. But um, we, every, as you know, every time we reprint a print, like a design. Melba fans, a design, thank you, new a design, color. we try and throw in a new colour if there is room to do so. For example, with the Melba fans at the moment, gin, shush, we're out of four, we're out of three colours. Quite. Um, that didn't work. So we're out of three colours, but the minimum requirement to print is four. Well, the, we can print yardage, yeah. yardage, yardage, instead of printing more than we need. So do you remember we were doing this? I've got to hide the top because it's all very secret squirrel business. So this will be periwinkle fans. Do you like that now? Do you like it? you like it. It is very pretty. So Jill Chisholm, she made it for you. Oh, she, she's a pretty... <laughs> Sorry, so she is the blue that's queen. That's that print, but it's going to come in this colour. 
so it's periwinkle borders is that lovely border um, between blue and purple so I'll put it up close for you and I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed with that I think we're good to go there's actually two versions here I just need to go and read sometimes the difference is ever so subtle I think it's my ground that's different so sometimes it's so subtle I can't see it until I read what the difference is and then I can pick what they've done but I will go and have a look now this will be pertinent to moving forward to our Japanese collection because this color now that it's set we can go off and color the winter the color winter way. spring colorway so just just listen oh Oh, Blue and green should never be seen. <laughs> so that's one thing in my. How are you doing? You alright? Yep. I'll go and remove the cat. As long as she doesn't come up here and help me sew. No, we'll no, no. I'm going to give you the camera time. back. You ready? Oh, am I? I don't know. Oh, look at her go with the automatic thread cutter. Oh, thread. thread Sorry, the automatic threader. needle threader. Needle threader. Eileen Campbell, who I'm now going to speak about loud and proud because she is now the newest owner of one of these. Mm. I went and saw her yesterday. We'll let her have a whirl, have a test drive. Oh, uh, unless someone puts everything. their hand up really quickly, she's my she'll last machine. Hurrah, sap. Up for now. I'm sorry, I don't want to knock them off. And I know that they've already been was, sat on. When I was stitching stitching. before, everything over there just went off. flying. Um, so, um, am I back? No? Do you, do you want to? You can back? cut back to me when you're ready. Oh, okay. There you go. Okay. Uh, but Eileen had never ever used her needle threader in 10 years on her 710. Kudos to her, she could still thread a machine with. I know. By um, she can now. Snake charm. She does now. But it's, it is you, Blue. Um, so, you can see here, I have stitched across. The bottom, that, that's actually the straight edge, but it's the angled, sorry, the straight grain, the angled edge. So when I open it up and give it a press, because you that's all you press, that open, and you can see I've actually got it a tiny bit off. But that is the only pressing you do. And as quilters, we like to come back and press in half. But that's when you're you're torturing your beautiful bias. Remember your bias is your friend. Bias cut bias is your friend. So we want it to be lovely and soft over this edge. So instead of ironing it in half, let me see how many things I can knock off the table because it really, honest to goodness, won't take me long. I was knocking things behind the machine in Lisa's office before. So what you do is you pop, I can unclip this now and make a big mess on the floor and lasso my leg. You pop just some straight pins in every six inches or so. Now I'll go a little bit further so that I can come right the way around the edge. And I'm just, not even finger pressing, I'm just folding it in half and popping a pin in. No finger pressing down the folded edge, just folding it and gently because the other thing that happens when we press it in half, we tend to drag the iron along it and it stretches that bias. Your binding will become a little bit narrower and it's, n it's not soft and pliable. We want to keep it soft. We want it to feel flexible. Now, Lisa kind of went, why are you sewing that with a 37 foot before? Because I was. Now, we've only got one layer of soft and stable. If I was sewing a bag, I'd probably want my walking foot, and I, it's not likely I'd be sewing these kind of angles. But with all the registration marks on the 37, I think, or the 97, or the 57 foot, it is so much easier to, to know where to turn and when to stop. So I'm sewing, I'm aligned directly on the edge of my foot. 
and I'm coming up so that I am at the point where I will now, see I've got used to, out of practice, I'm used to lifting up the foot from last week. And so my work behind me is going to move and I'm just going to pivot around that corner until everything is in pointing in the direction I want to sew. And the other, I did actually sew down the top stitching on the, from the front side. So I had two, four, six, two, four, six, eight layers of fabric and the soft and stable. But because it's a lovely banana, it did not, I sewed that with the 37 foot, it did not have an issue with it at all. Now when I come up to this point, I've got the registration marks on the, exactly on the side of the foot, exactly where the needle is. Now that is, I want to just go a smidgen further because it's not quite in line with the quarter inch. I just want to go a smidgen, one stitch. And again, pivot my work at the back, but also kind of creating a little fold here so that I'm not pulling the binding too hard. We were friends in the other room before, we really were. but. With my needle down, I'm just going to elevate my foot a little bit. Come around the corner. And other magic tip or tricks for this one is, if you haven't got a tailor's awl, a saute stick. Yes, they're usually about twice that length. Get your kitchen scissors out, chop it in half just so that you can really control, because I can fit that between the toes of the foot. And I can really steer, and if it's not quite rough enough, grab a piece of sandpaper or an emery board and just roughen up the edge a tiny bit so that you've got a little bit of grip on your awl, your cheapy awl. These are also great if you're doing curved piecing and you've got to steer things in. I'm stopping with the registration marks on the foot in line with the next edge and I'm throwing my little awl on the floor and this is a 90 degree angle so I am doing my traditional finish, knock everything off the table again, do my fold as we would when we are, I've got to make sure that you can see, sorry I was working in the dark there, so I've come to a quarter inch from, from the edge, I've stopped sewing and I've taken my work out. I've got a lovely straight line here from my work up the binding, so I've got a 45 degree angle here. And I'm bringing my binding back down again. Straight edge, keep sewing. Oh, did you see that? Because I've got that already. I'm just going to pop a pin in it. I haven't pinned for the other parts, but with all the moving and shaking and switching things around, I've managed to unthread the needle again. Right. Let's see how much stuff I can knock off over the table now. Because I'm right on the edge of the table, I also have the disadvantage of it's a little bit heavy over there. Again, I'm coming to this 135 degree angle, so I want to go just a smidgen, and that there's my registration mark, and a tiny bit back is the actual change of angle, rearrange my work, pick it up so that I can bring the binding round, raise my foot without raising my needle, and my little awl is on the floor, so I'm just being grateful I've got exceptionally long fingernails at the moment, but keeping them well clear of the needle, of course. So Binding like this, while it's time consuming, is very, very satisfying. And one more and chop. And I recently bound 
the edges of um, I think it would be called a Jane Austen style scrappy quilt where I had made units of fabric up, cross cut them on a 60 degree angle and so I then had these little 60 degree triangles across one, sorry across two sides and then straight on the other side there's my nice, get my fingers out of the way, there's my nice straight line. And fold back down, thread out of the way, back over to the machine. And while I did have my that lovely quilt with all those 60 degree pickety edge, my quilter said, you get, you're going to cut that straight, aren't you? No, that was part of the appeal of it. And the person to whom I gave it just loved it. She said it was like a magic carpet because it had the concept of fringing without actually being fringed. And I'm going to lift my foot up. And everybody back into line. And there are pros and cons, of course, of short lengths of binding that have been joined together because I am just about to hit one of those inopportune events where the... I told you I'd knock things off the table. Eventually, where the join in the binding is actually right on where I'm turning the corner. But we can cope. Just one step at a time, I'm coming up. There's my join. Probably a bit too sparkly, sparkly for you to see because of the glare from the gold onto the fabric. There's my nice. Hello. Oui. There's my nice fold, which is a bit tricky because that join is in the middle of that fold. And back over to the machine. And going just one little bees past that corner so that I have enough room to pivot everything and to make sure that I am going to get my quarter inch seam allowance coming around the other way. another 90 degree so I've got to do my fold. It's great practice if you're a beginner, not that you'd really want to do this if you were a beginner, on getting that straight line of binding from your quilt up to your binding, foldy foldy down again so that it's square at the top. And of course, when we tip that over to the other side, we do get a lovely mitre. I have a feeling. I, know, I think we've just got a random extra thread there. It's been a bit sneaky. Thank you. my needle go just past that corner so that I can bring everybody round to the next little party. And I've run out of pinned binding so I'm just going to pop a couple of pins back in here. But the, the fact that it has not been ironed in half has not changed anything about actually applying it for its first stitching to the quilt. And this would be the case with a quilt, a table runner, any kind of 
anything that we're putting binding onto, if it's bias cut binding and you don't iron it down, it's just that little bit more flexible and forgiving. Because once we start bringing it to the front, if it's got a hard, sharp crease in it, it's not certainly not as easy to work with. And this should be my last 90 for a little bit. Actually, I think it's not quite. So again, bringing it up so I've got that straight line, continuous straight line, and folding it back onto itself to create the 40... Five mitre inside here. And putting everyone in place. I'm not going to go all the way because you would like to see what it's doing on the front. I'll just come along to this nice section of straight road. You're getting me somewhere to continue from later. So at the moment, I've got what looks like kind of little spirals around these corners and then I'm going to go to oh, the coffee lady's just been or is she the tea lady then I'm going to just gently pop them all up I'm not cutting anything off in the corners and you can see that it's pretty damn close on the front so I'm just pushing them out nice this is the tricky one that had that seam allowance in it but there, because it's not pressed, it's happy to come around. It was happy, she says, famous last words. It's happy to come around. And they're soft. They're not hard and sharp. You can see there's little wrinkles here. Can you see? There you go. You can see there's a little wrinkle in the binding there. But because it's bias, it will just smooth out when we come back to sew. Uh, we'll do that. From that point, do a little bit of go backwards. I will actually go from here. When we're coming back on the outside points, these outside points, so that your machine can come down without having to hit a, a curb effectively, you don't want to put this one in and then this one in because then you've got this extra little bit of bulk that sticks up. So fold this one up if you'd like to. You can put a little mini clip on there to hold him in place. You can also use your satay stick if you haven't thrown it on the floor. But give it a nice little press with your finger. Hold that point in there and bring your binding over to the front. And the other reason I did continue with the 37 foot was I know that I'm sewing a quarter of an inch consistently from the outside edge because I'm using my 37 foot and it's just got so many lovely marks on it that I now know not, not quite far enough at, to this edge here. I want to come another stitch. Yep, that's where my quarter inch is because of, I know that from my registration marks on my foot. Turn the corner. Take a couple of stitches before I have to pull out the peg. Pull everyone into place. And as I come down to... This is going to love me later. This is going to be in so many sections where it's bound and not. I can see the stitching line here. It's probably a little bit tricky with the lighting. But I've got to sew until I'm virtually in line with the my needle needs to be on that line which is one more and then I can turn and I know here again I've got another 90 degree out here so I'll fold up the bottom so I don't crash into the gutter coming around that corner and this time 
I'm just going to sneak out, not that you can see me sneaking out of shot anyway. Bring it all over nice and flat. I forget that this hand gets in the way. I've got some threads there. I might just tidy them up so that they don't stick out later. Okay. And fold this guy over. The reason you need to tuck it all the way in there is so that this edge here, actually if I point with, sits right on the corner where they intersect. We're doing a little bit of top stitching. Cool. Lisa's just walked into the room, you can't see her. And now my binding has decided to be a little bit tricky, so I'm just going to lift up my foot, give it a poke. Remember, we're friends. We're not, we're not going to be mean to each other. I'm just going to gently persuade it to go back to where I want it to. And one more. And turn the next corner. Again, I've got to look, here's actually, if I put my little sarté stick there, you might be able to see it. There's my line of stitching for the piecing. So my needle has to be in line with that before I pivot. One more. And then folding. Now again, here's another 90. Fold up the bottom. Oh, and there's another, I can feel a seam allowance there as well. But we haven't really had any seam allowance fights. I will just snip that. Tucking that right in. I'll try and do it with the saute stick, which makes it easier for you to see as well. So right in there and then bringing over Come on, nicely, nicely. Is it my turn yet? Is yeah, you can yet? have a turn, please. The girl's probably bored watching me binding. Now, if my binding were to kick up now, I can get right in there, right up to the needle, and I am not going to stitch my finger because it's my starter stick that I'm putting in the little danger zone. One more. Come back, please. I can smell the coffee and it's really, really tempting. <laughs> I don't know what I've done with mine now. I'm just going to find it. Let's see if... Hello? Hi. Are you on? I don't know what we're on now. I'm on. I can't see. I'm on, so I'm on. Can I'm I on. just keep telling? You, you can like keep me saying. Um, set up for the bag. Okay, what would you like me to do? Are we showing, doing a little bit of applique? Well, here? we we are. We're just going to show the girls how to set it all up because if they decide they want to start prepping before the free motion show on, sh on Saturday, oh, yes. they can get their pattern or prep something else up and they can be ready to go. So I want you to, we'll walk them through that process. As you can tell, I've got nothing to do with today's show. It's all Emma. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was like the crock pot. Oh, just uh, set and forget. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. No, I saw the, the local crock pot. <laughs> in in the box from Japan as well was my mm. now I'm gonna tell you I've just rejected a fabric. Which one? Uh, ivory pink. On a good day, Ivory Tink brought a stripe, all six hundred meters of it. I'm going to because you know I'm so particular. There's just Oh, we'll show it to you. Is the colour not right? It's not quite the same. Now, if I was selling it to you as a one-off and you'd seen it, if you were a shop owner, welcome if I to didn't. Emma's Patchwork Shop. <laughs> um, I, I don't know what happens if I reject 600 metres of fabric. Have I done it before? I don't know. Come close. Come close with the teal border stripe. Yes. 
Yes, and I we remember. decided the mistake was better than the original. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I've never done it before. But the thing about Melbourne is, you know, if it was a one-off, if I'd sold to Emma's Patchwork Shop in Endeavour Hills, it's got a nice ring to it, actually. Um, Hi, everyone in Endeavour Hills. <laughs> Rock on round. Hey, Flora. So <laughs> if if I if that was the case, and you'd seen it on a swatch or on a website, and six months later, mm. you got it. But did I have friends of Melbourne already? Did even I... if you even if you had friends of Melbourne, but Ooh. but now if I've got people waiting that are halfway through a quilt that need to mm -hmm. buy more, mm -hmm. we can't do that. It's just it's just so an it's, essence. It's just it's the one that we've had in the past. Yeah, yeah. But printed it's fifty thousand times. They've printed on a base stock that's different, I think. Oh. But the others aren't. There will be words in the warning. Shots fired. Shots fired. Uh, they'll just have to reprint it. Um, and that means we jump the queue and it will just be a little bit behind. Um, and then the big question is, what happens to the 10 metre sample piece that they sent? I know. So uh, that's another discussion that might be a Melbourne you have when you don't have Melbourne. Because this costs me the earth mm -hmm. to get mm -hmm. air freighted with mm -hmm. air freight. Anyway, just just have a little look. This You can't have this yet. You will be able to, but you just can't but have I it yet. But I want it now. Stephen will set it up on the website soon, and we'll do our little pre-order thing again. But this is the new palest of delicate greys in the Melbourne Small Floral. Uh, a few people have said to me, when do I find out, how do I find out what projects you are running on <laughs> at, at the soiree? And the answer is you don't. It's a surprise uh -huh. to an extent. But I will reveal that one of my projects, which I said, did reveal the other day, I think, this is why we Rolls. have brought in this piece. Ooh. It is exclusively to make one of make? Shh, later. One of my projects for the story will be made from this. Which won't be available here at the time. I don't think so. There's a But the thing is, it doesn't matter, I have to I have to make a hundred kits and you get do. the sample made. I can't wait. It might rock up the day before. Yeah. That will work to bringing it to the pop-up shop at the soiree. It will not work for making a sample and making a hundred no. kits. No, no, no. Right, so that's that one. And this is the other one that will be our new baby. So we've taken the pink and teal. <laughs> I don't like pink, but I like that. So we've taken the pink and teal and we've now popped it onto black with the silver. Yum. So... The beauty of this, okay, you, you got it. Go uh, Melba Kaleidoscope. Yeah. Uh, the octagonal. Hello, something like this. Something like that, but with six. Oh, why not? Just because we have it on ivory, grey, and black, but all the flowers are the same colours. So I actually want to do the fussy cut kaleidoscope. Oh, because you've got the three. The one, leaves two, and one, everything two, will match up, and the colours of the flowers will be the same, but the background colour change. will change. That messing with your head yet? Yeah, that'd be down to our 60 and 30 degree triangles and kites and all it's those It's amazing, jazz. but it's, it's amazing how the colours present themselves differently. They do, they do look as pink. It doesn't look as pink, but the mint pops. What happens? Don't whack me in the head. Oh, yes, yeah, see, look. Hang on, I'm up to a corner we're again. The, we're going to put the teal with this. Oh. Have you got a pink So it's just a whole new toy. Oh, I threw them on the floor, the pink fans. You threw them on the floor. Sorry. Into that holding pen at the bottom there. <coughs> no, 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 the, the pink fans. Go a little bit. Go oh, a little yeah, further. but I'm here now. <laughs> See, look. I like that there's more contrast. It, they are really, really striking. I really like the ivory. You want the pink? Yeah, sorry. Sorry, it's girls, just a bit of a flatter. It. <laughs> it's a bit further afield than... Uh, James, I know you're listening, and I'm really, really sorry. There's not enough dialogue going on because we're just, we're just messing with fabric. See, that is unusual. But it all works. But this is, this is where this comes in because the silver in the floral or in the fan will pick up. Can you, can you put the pink against, directly against? Can you, can you ditch the bit of kaleidoscope? I want to see it really. You want to, you don't do, you don't do pink. I don't care. This, this would be, oh, hello, hello, hello. Mm. Remember that dress we did for Sarah to wear? Yes. 
And this in black. Oh my god. Box pleat skirt with the bodice. Yes. Remember that? Yes. How could I forget? Um, I'm going to go and get the, in a minute the grey fans to have a look at with it as well. Um, um, excuse me, Miss. Yes. Is it only border stripe that's coming in black, or are others coming in black? At the moment, it's only the border stripe. Maybe. That will be up to Nanny Moo. Okay. I'm going to go and get the grey fan as well. Uh, the, the other reason just for doing the small floral is not just because of Melbourne, is because there is no silver, silver, small, delicate floral around in anything, Robert Kaufman fusions or anything at the moment. Right, um, I forgot Saturday afternoon. We all, we had a fabulous time, but I forgot to draw the prize from the, <laughs> from the show before. You did that the week before last. I know. You've been so, distracted. So I'm just uh, putting in my... Your numbers, your magic numbers. number generator. So this is from the previous Wednesday, the start of the previous Wednesday show, up to one minute before two o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Just one minute before. I'm saying it officially. I was, there were, you know, it's amazing I forgot because there was something we were doing on Saturday and I felt like I was reading the Tuts Lotto results. <laughs> So and I'm going to, yeah, so I'm going to do that and do that. So our first prize winner, yeah, it's like this. Supplementary this number, prize number. Mm -hmm. 3718. Let me write that down in a friction and not put it near an iron. One, three. And then we go from 2 o'clock Saturday um, through to the last order in before the start of the show today. Okay. And you wonder what I've been doing while you've been binding. What's the next number? Yeah, what, what do we go up to? We go up to 3793. And then we go done, and then we push. Now, remember the deal is, is if it does turn out to be a block of the month, I will redraw it and uh, let the person know. 3748 is the second one. So we had 3718 and 3748. Oh. And you know how you think it doesn't ever do it? It did actually randomly choose the last number in wow. the group last week. First one is Sharon Keys and the second one is a bomb. Oh, oh, do the second one again then. You have to do it. First again. one is Sharon Keys. Oh, so I just pushed good, generate good. again. Thanks, Steve. Oh, my old postcode, it's his little postcode. 3777. 3777. <laughs> Ah, uh, do you all remember your postcodes? I don't, because Mum and Dad moved every oh. five minutes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Vicky McQuee, MCQ. Is it Vicky? Vic's got an order in today. She does. Yeah. Vicky, congratulations! Yeah, Vicky McQuee's got an order in today. I'm pretty sure she has. Um, so we will send that out. So the first prize, you go. What did I win? Sharon, you won a, the magnificent. Gorgeous little pack. Oh, what are they? Liberty. They're very pretty. So let me just remove. There's a bit of a clash of options <laughs> and colours going on here. Liberty, Liberty. Hey, Grey Melba Floral with uh, Wilshire Shadow. I'm going to go and make that happen. That's yours. And then Vicky, Vicky. wins all this. Now, this was a sample that nice I got in. Nice. They're absolutely fantastic. They're fusing mats for doing your applique. How absolutely so appropriate. So different to, to applique mat. You get a mesh and you can see through and you can iron on top. They're wonderful. Okay. Specialised. We need to move on or we're not going to get the back to No, I know. But then again, she's binding the whole thing. I don't know. It might leave her there. Specialised non-slip materials prevents movement of your fabrics and mat so everything remains in the place while ironing. <gasps> See-through design provides great visibility for oh, applique so you can creation. Your, your diagram underneath. Yes. Now I'm with you. Yes. So I've done my test and I love them. I'm going to send this one to Vicky and she can let us know what she thinks and then we'll get them in. It's the same cool company that make our little alley. <laughs> it's all right, let's speak your language. It's the tick, 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 tick. light. Yeah, light. it's the LED lights. Oh, that's right, green packaging. I yes. remember. Yes, and I'm going to go back to you for a minute and I'm going to go right. and get the tote. I'm done. Are you done? Well, I haven't done that bit over there, but I'm done on. Okay. on I've well, reached where I leave, started. Oh, no, I won't. I'll leave the girls with you. Okay. And James. Sorry, I'm talking about James. We're used to seeing the girls. And I'm bringing all this over, yes? Yes. Oh, while you do that, I can change change threads. What are you changing threads for? Because I've reached where I 
started so we're more than halfway with look we've only got a very short way to go all right well i think i think we'll just get this i'm going to show the girls where we're at or do you want to show the girls do where we're at? To, we don't need do to sew this today cameras? oh that'd help wouldn't it yeah we're not <laughs> We're not going to make this today, but we're going to show the girls. I want you to show them where, where you've got to and how you got there. Okay. That makes sense. Where I've been and, and then, how I got there. Yeah, and then they can chuff off and grab the pattern or grab something similar that they want to work and with. And you're going to, are you going to do the applique and quilting um, when yes. you see them next? Yes. Or am I going to start applique? How are we going for time? I have no idea. It's half past three. You've got 15 minutes. Okay. I won't talk to Did you. Did you bring my my leaves? Oh, my, my one gum nut. I like it. Thank you. Can I have that piece? Which piece? The chalk paper, please. Sure. And the random piece of black that was lying around somewhere. I think it might have ended up back in. Oh, there. I'll go and get it for you. Because we were going to talk about this delightful <laughs> Sorry, I have paper. to scratch her tummy because she thought I was coming to <laughs> To play something. with her. <laughs> Right, I'll grab that mic. Yes, yes, no. <laughs> no oh, it's looking messy from another view. Yes. So, the tote, which is behind me, we are making a new kit for you in the dark colour way. And it's the same technique as the little bag that we showed you with the cork, where the sides wrap around. And so you've got a front and a back and a bottom. And the sides come from the front and back because they meet on the sides. We have pieced the section into the middle. And we have also traced, but I've ironed since I traced, the diagram now in order to do the applique trace the applique you can see no you can't see I need to change to this camera here on the back because I used the window as my light source I numbered my gum nuts and I incorrectly labeled my lefts and rights and I did get it correct but then I flipped it because we want to trace for applique from this side so your diagram is reversed and conveniently it's on single sided papers and then our leaves, I go this way, I have positioned some chalk paper and doesn't matter what direction the chalk paper in, is in as long as it takes in all of your diagrams. So I had to go like this, but then I've straightened up my diagram on top and I have traced. Here's the swappy. Here's the swappy. I have um, traced on the diagram, but I just wanted to show you. I commented to Lisa how amazingly sharp yeah. this chalk and, paper is. And the is. other thing to mention to the girls, over the, to the team and James. Our viewers. And John. Our viewers. Our viewers. Is <laughs> Sorry, we're here. So, well, yes. Are we're, we? We're there. Yeah, we are. Um, is that we've always called it graphite or carbon paper up to And this I point. call it chalk paper because I'm dress paper, making. But it's actually called transfer paper, and I have put it under today's specials and but I've it put is it, tagged, isn't it? And I've put it on special. And I explained to them why we call it tagged, and it means nothing to them. But it's under the banner, and it's. We in, can find it from the banner, that's what tagged means. Yeah. So. This transfer paper, chalk paper, it's not quite graph graphite paper or carbon paper, but that's what it, we used to use it for in its uh, typing day. I put it between with the chalk side facing down and then I just go over my lines which I wish to transfer. Little registration marks. Oh, and this is what it looks like when it comes to you. Get There we go. Oh look, you can trace out all of your sashiko. Little registration marks for the top and bottom of the leaves, because I don't need the whole leaf position. The stalk, the stalk to go down to the gum, whoops, gum nut. 
and registration marks for the corners of the gum nuts. But I commented to, to Lisa as I traced this before at how beautifully crisp these this chalk paper is because can you see it? I can see it magnificently. I've got to get it so that you can there, ooh, get the right light. There you go. You can see how lovely and sharp and clear those lines are. And I'll be buying a packet this afternoon because anyone who did Love and Hugs last year, I chose to do mine in variegated yellow thread because somehow I had stacks of it on, I think it's called Onyx um, Fusions. So it's a really dark grey because I just wanted that we're in the glam and I tell you it was really hard with the chalk paper I had. It didn't want to go through. Now, so tips and tricks again for working with the applique, no, Lysaflex. I've traced, peeled off the um, backing paper, applied it to the back of my fabric to applique and I made sure that I worked out from the photo on the front of the pattern which leaves were made of which print and you can see I'm going to go back to here you can see our gum nuts contrast that one's a bit hard to see until we stitch it down with the fabric that they are actually applied to and then here's the lesson in how to um, cut remembering we're moving the work in one smooth fluid cut rather than making pixelated cuts so one nice long cut and just move your fabric through round the scissors not through the scissors well oh, that's stuck and sit down I think I managed to pick that up then and our other little trick was can't find the corner won't make it come up and we don't want to tear our bias or stretch our bias on the outside edge give it a tear with a pin which cuts the paper and there we go and that one goes I think I did manage to move that that one goes just here and we can refer to our di actually it does go overlap I can refer to my diagram here this little gum nut being this little gum nut does actually overlap and because we've used Vlizaflex, no steamer seam that will stay in place as I pick it up and go over to the ironing board it's not going to fall off on the way there and I'm going to cut back to Lisa she just doesn't know it right it's, it's your trade. turn trade places where are you going I'm what just going to iron this down what, what what you left me here <laughs> Yeah, put the crock pot on. Put the crock pot on. I haven't even got my coffee with me. What am I going to do? I don't know. Okay. No, I don't know. This iron's not on. No, you put the other one on. So I know, so it didn't make noises. Can you pass me over the kits, please? Certainly can. The girls will think I took my RDO today. Thank you. <laughs> RDO? You? Oh, that shows me how old I am. Dad had an RDO. Oh, they still exist. Don't you worry. Do they? Yeah. Oh, Dad was a telecom man, so he used to work a nine-day fortnight. Well, that's more than an RDO. You used to only get one a month. No, no, something you set up with an RDO. Oh, I don't remember that. I don't remember. Um, I'm going to check in here and see how everyone is, because I haven't looked for about an hour. Oh, oh ma, they've oh, probably ma. been telling me things, you know, I can see up your skirt and things like that. There's probably been all that going on. I'm sure if there was something really bad, they would ring. <laughs> Thank you. But um, just before Em comes back on, just so you can see what, what's in the kits that we're putting up, we, we've got a little bit of a tag team going at the moment because uh, Cass has just been way late in getting the digital download up. So she'll yep. have it up. She said, please tell everyone I'll have it up in about an hour. The thing is, you can download that in your pyjamas at midnight. It doesn't. Hello, Judy. It's Judy. <laughs> Judy. 
She's picking on you. No, she you told me what? she likes to watch sitting up in bed in her oh, jammies with right. her coffee. I sit up in bed and watch Natasha in my jammies. Actually, last night, Jeanette Warner, and if you, we were all on together from Australia watching Natasha, uh, under the, definitely under the weather, definitely under the weather. Ooh, Gemma sounded Gem, horrendous um, uh, after her little COVID episode. I didn't sound anything like that. I was just done and dusted. But I told her to knock off the cigars. She appreciated that. <laughs> All right, so in there's two kits going up, and you've got just the raw deal photos at the moment. So you've got the mint coloured one, so that's the outside of your bag, that's the lining. I'm just trying to sound like Natasha, which is, I mustn't do that. Um, that's the panel that goes in here. So it's actually, it may look like a solid on the camera, but it's the most subtle shaded shadow play. Easy to get the right side right. Oh, look, Maria Waters is ringing me. I'll bring her back. <laughs> You know what it will be? I want a 7352. Yeah, so there's that. And then you've got your two strips, which M tells me are four times as big as you need, but that's okay for your um I did your have to go back and revisit because I've managed to cut the gum nuts out of the same colour as the leaves, so I have no contrast. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Okay, and then the other one's the one M's working on now, so that's lining outside and your applique. With the flowers for this one, the jewellery... Sure, has been out on what colour the flowers are going to be. Ooh. I'm going to go out on a limb and tell you right now, I think they're going to be metallic gold. Yeah, yeah. do it. Otherwise, they could be anything. You could really pop of red. Oh, red. Sorry, I've done. What? Come here, blue one. From when you first did under the Australian Oh, uh, yeah, child. Robert Coffin wanted blue flannel flowers. Uh, no. no. So, and still, no. So um, these red would yeah. be absolutely stunning. stunning. Here you go. So we put this up and just a full on pop of red. Um, you could also go into an antique gold because of the colours in the gum nuts. Look at the size, mm. like the size of a circus tent in my bean of You're hiding again. behind the machine, it's okay. That's, That's huge. All right. I'm no, the girls. No, they love when I tell them I've been up shopping. Oh no, no, no. That's all right. All right. Anyway, so I think pop of red, metallic gold. I, I am loving this in here. Oh, that used to be latte in the five five seven three. Yes. Yes. No, no, no. Six six four four. It yeah. was. Anyway, you can get yourself all ready to go, and we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Because you're Saturday. going to. Are you going to do the applique and the? I am. Free motion. Of the flowers I am because, and the quilting. Yes, because yes, you can. Because I can. But Saturday afternoon, it's sort of, it, it's kind of nice and it's a bit low just key. Sew. We just sit and sew together, don't we? That's what we did the other day. And I didn't really start nice. sewing until half past five on Saturday and that was my mission for all day Saturday. Oof. Present. No, I'll take those out. Okay. Away. Well, I'm and done. Then, you can probably say goodnight. Sa no, I'm not saying goodnight because I've got to just check everyone's okay. <laughs> Uh, so Emma and I, so what we're going to do now is get a cuppa, another cuppa, and we're going to sit down and go through the Benina Big Book of Feet. It's because, so shopping. Because we know that we uh, are pretty much done. See you in the gift shop? See you in the gift shop. Oh, thanks, Sylvia. Black one. She likes black one all the way. It's stunning. We, we always kind of thought it would be, mm. and it's, it's just so silly that we, you look back now and go, why have we not done this? But we must have had plans to, because we had You're it going, written in the requirements. Can you just go and get me the red bolt, just pacify me, grab me the red bolt. Red bolt off. Red background gun with. Oh! Oh, that, Jane, that's lovely. Yeah, you should, absolutely. Oh, see, Donna's husband's on a nine-day nine fortnight. It was brilliant for us because we bought the farm. So, wait, do you know like that wait? Wait. Mum and Dad bought the farm. Mum and Dad bought the farm. I worked on the farm. Oh, Jones, the girls say congratulations to the winners. Oh, Fiona, Fiona asked me for my beach bag. I don't know what I've done with the beach bag. I have been looking for the beach bag, Fiona. And that was the beach bag that I was making in the show to take to Port Campbell. What happened to the beach bag? Do you, do you know where the beach bag is? Oh, close, but not Close, quite. but no cigar. So... I just I just asked him to grab the red bolt because I think it's cream M or the we'll have to get the palest of green. 
just because we were talking about red flowers, I thought what would happen if we did this on a really a really strong cream background in here with the leaves and then put oh, pop a colour. Um, Sorry, <laughs> you asked for pale green. Pale green. And the gum nuts would almost be natural 6644, I think. Yeah, so, yeah, and I, I know Fiona, I've got to find it. I, I'm, I'm looking for it. You would think I would have been found it after having my big clean out, but I haven't found it. I think I flicks this. I think I'll make a bag. Have just finished a bear called Drumbot. Gumdrop. Oh, send photos, Felicity, please. Drop Can it. you send me a link to the weekend? As I have lost it to to the weekend, to the soiree. weekend, to the to the soiree, Sylvia, or to last weekend's Facebook post. Let me know which one, uh, because we will organise whatever you need. You're getting closer. You're getting you're getting closer to but what I'm, I'm kind thinking. of guesstimating, and, and it's all going to fall off the shelf. Girls can't see it up there. Oh, <coughs> I've just realised it's a bit it's a bit high. Out of shot. I think I think Rob's knocked the lights. They're not the same today, and one's looking but very yellow. But I do yellow. think we are actually that way more. Oh, than we usual. are. Yeah, we had to because of the sewing machine on the desk and stuff. I moved us across. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll keep play. playing. We'll, we'll. Gum nuts? See, that's it natural. is our destiny to keep playing. No, it needs to be brown. Yeah, we'll keep playing. Um, a pale, 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 pale green shadow play. I'll find one. We'll do. All right. Um, so, Sylvia, please send me an email if I lose your comments at Info at Chandler's Cottage of what you, uh, what you are missing, and we will get it to you. Agree, Fiona? We'll do. All right, everyone. We will chuff off now. Um, Steve's out there slaving away and we're going to go and give him a hand. As I said, we're going to go through our Benina book and just check if there's anything else we want before I place my last order, before my account goes bum, to bum, bum. into e eco mode, like my sewing machine, <laughs> into sleep mode <laughs> for a little mode. while. So just if you need anything, check your bobbins, check all of that because we're putting in one last have big uh, accessory order tomorrow morning. With the machine. Maybe two. When you make that phone call. make the phone call back. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Um, talking of going to sleep, my computer went to sleep about an hour ago. <laughs> Isn't it plugged in? Isn't it just tell it? Yeah, but it, yes, however. Oh, yeah, you, but we didn't touch it, so it's decided we're not using it. They all know that my, sometimes um, I say goodbye and it, we're still live for another five minutes because my new flash computer and live streaming. Not friends. Not friends. Yeah. Not friends at all. Um, please take care. I will be back at 7.30 on Thursday night with some other little demos and catch-ups and then two, uh, sorry, 2 o'clock on Saturday afternoon is the plan. So I'll get those live events up for you so you can tag them. And, um, yeah, I'll see you then. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. On behalf of Steve, Emma, Ginny and myself, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.